everyone. A blessing to be back in the house of the Lord again. Just so much disruption and troubles and everything going on in the world and people are just killing people for no reason at all. So I guess today we need to make sure that we're ready to go today, not for tomorrow. Amen. We're going to read from Psalm 89, verses 1 through 15. Let's pray, if you would. Heavenly Father, again, we are grateful and thankful for this privilege and opportunity you have given us to come together to worship. Father, we pray that as all the things and troubles in this world, that you will just bless us and guide us, Father. Keep us safe. Lord, keep us safe always in your presence. Lord, asking you for the anything that trouble, God, that you would just bring forth the peace and understanding unto us. Touch our bodies, Father, and heal them. Give us rest and peace and understanding. Lord, we ask you to bless those that are in the Sunday school classes today. Father, open up their understanding. Father, give them strength as they grow. Lord, we ask you to bless our pastor, Father, and just give him the words that we need to hear and bless us that we may receive. Amen. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Psalm 89. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. For I have said, mercy shall be forever. Thy faithfulness shall have established in the very heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have shown, <coughs> sworn, Unto David, my servant. Thy seed will I establish forever and build up thy thrones to all generations. And the heaven shall praise thy wonders, O Lord, thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. For who can be compared unto the Lord? Who among the sons of the mighty can be like unto the Lord? God is greatly to be feared in the assembly of the saints and to be had in reverence of all them that are about him. O Lord, God of hosts, who is a strong Lord, I come to thee. O Lord, thy faithfulness round about thee. Thou rulest the raging of the sea. When the waves thereof arise, thou stillest them. The heavens are thine, the earth also is thine, as for the world and the fullness thereof, thou hast founded them. The north and the south thou hast created them, Taylor and her own shall rejoice in the Justice and judgment are the habitation <laughs> of thy throne. Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. Let's look over 204. That's 204 in the spiral book. There is coming a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky. No more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore. 
what a day, glorious day that will be. Oh, what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look upon his face. The one who saved me by his grace And he takes me by the hand And leads me through that promised land What a day, glorious day that will be Well, there'll be no sorrow there no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no more pain, no more parting over there, and forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day that will be. Oh, what a day that will be When my Jesus I shall see And I look upon his face The one who saved me by his grace And he takes me by the hand And leads me through that promised land what a day, glorious day that will be. Well, there'll be no sorrow there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no more pain, and no more parting over there. What a day, glorious day that will be. Oh, what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see and I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. And he takes me by the hand And leads me through that promised land What a day, what a glorious day that will be Amen, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I love it, don't you? Yeah. Let's look over to 214 Thank you, Lord the windows of heaven are open for you to receive a blessing. The windows of heaven are open. The blessings are falling tonight. And there's joy, joy, joy in my heart. For Jesus makes everything right. Well, I gave him my old tattered garment. He gave me a robe of pure white And I'm feasting today on the manna And that's why I'm happy tonight Because the windows of heaven are open The blessings are falling tonight And there's joy, joy, joy in my heart for Jesus makes everything right. See, I gave him my old tattered garment. He gave me a robe of pure white. And I'm feasting today on the manna. And that's why I'm happy tonight. Because the windows of heaven are open. The blessings are falling tonight And there's joy, joy, joy in my heart 
for Jesus makes everything right. See, I gave him my old tattered garment. He gave me a robe of pure white. And I'm feasting today on the manna. And that's why I'm happy tonight. Amen. It's wonderful to be happy in the Lord, isn't it? Let's turn over to 228. As I travel through this pilgrim land, there is a friend who walks with me. Leads me safe through, through the sinking sand. It is the Christ of Calvary. Well, this would be my prayer, dear Lord, each day. I do heal the best I can For I need thy light To guide me day and night Blessed Jesus, hold my hand Jesus, hold my hand For I need thee every hour Land. Protect me by thy power and hear my feeble plea. Oh Lord, look down on me when I kneel in prayer. I know I'll meet you there. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Let me travel in the light divine That I may see the blessed way Keep me that I may be holy thine And sing redemption song someday For I will be a soldier brave and true And ever firmly Take a stand as I onward go and daily meet the full blessed Jesus. Hold my hand, yes, Jesus. Hold my hand, I need the every hour and through this pilgrim land. Protect me by the power And hear my feeble plea Oh Lord, look down on me When I kneel in prayer I know I'll meet you there Blessed Jesus, hold my hand when I wander through the valley dim Toward the setting of the sun Lead me safely to a land of rest If I a crown of life have won For I have put my faith in thee, dear Lord That I may reach that golden strand for there's no other friend on whom i can depend blessed jesus hold my hand yes jesus hold my hand i need the every hour and through this pilgrim land Protect me by thy power And hear my feeble plea Oh Lord, look down on me When I kneel in prayer I know I'll meet you there Blessed Jesus, hold my hand When I 
I wander through the valley dim toward the setting of the sun. Lead me safe to a land of rest if I a crown of life have won. For I have put my faith in thee, dear Lord, that I may reach that golden strand. There's no other friend on who I can depend. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Jesus, hold my hand. I need thee every hour. And through this pilgrim land, protect me by the power and hear my feeble plea oh lord look down on me when i kneel in prayer i know i'll meet you there blessed jesus hold my hand amen aren't you glad that he will meet you there Let's all stand. We're going to change the order of service. <clears throat> Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. Amen. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Amen. You love him? to be available to be seen then yeah. right if somebody wants to all right good to see everybody in the house of the lord we're glad to have our visitor back there with us we always say when you come one time here your visitor next time you're just part of us because we don't have anything to join but glad to have you and just make yourself to home all right remember the lord willing this coming wednesday night brother joe green will be with us ministering for that and then remember now to the brothers, the Father's Day uh, outing on the uh, 16th, 17th, 18th, I think that's right, the dates. Anyhow, uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, uh, we will be fellowshipping together and trout fishing and having a good time. Right, remember that. Uh, now, there needs to be a meeting after the evening service of all of the brothers that are planning on going to the outing of the the Father's Day time. So if you will meet in Wade Sunday School room uh, after the evening service. And is the sisters going to meet? They need to meet probably in one of the other rooms somewhere. All right. So they, the sisters will be meeting too because they will be making their schedules and all to do uh, during the time that we're going to be gone. You're going to be gone too. So we're looking forward to everybody having a good time. Amen. So we're glad to have our visitors and and all to come and be with us and fellowship with us. Right? 
Uh, if you'd like turning your scriptures, turn where we've been reading in Revelation 3 and 2 Peter 1. Revelation 3, 2 Peter 1. The Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that this is the day and the hour that we can truly depend upon you to open our eyes to thine understanding of thy word, that we may see you and walk in the grace of your love. Forgive our sins and lead us and guide us, Lord. And as we read your word, you come and speak to our hearts and our lives, Lord, that we may follow into your footsteps and guide each one. You promised it in your word. You said you sent your word and healed us and delivered us from destruction. So we're believing it. Have your way now with us. Be with a little bride around the world. You know the different sicknesses and things that are among the people there, Lord, and just be with each one. Be with Brother Forney there as he's having trouble with his blood pressure and things, and Sister Cleta with her back hurting, and all of the different ones among us that are sick. Just touch each one. Let your love be made manifest, and guide us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Revelation 3. And unto the angel of the church of the Lady of Seans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness. And who is he? The beginning of the creation of God. And who are we? The rest of that creation. All right. So now we go to Second Peter 1 to read from verse 1 through 8. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us, through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, now having, that's, that's the new birth. We're going getting to those parts, right? And then now he's going to tell us how the growth development happens. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith, virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to patience, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. You may be seated. The Lord had his blessing to the reading of the word. Now, we're trying to get to a place of understanding and seeing the hour and the time that we're living. And we look around and see how everything is fastly coming to a close as far as um, the natural things of life is, is working out and, you know, everything's falling apart. But we're not supposed to be concerned with that. We're supposed to be concerned about our spiritual uh, makeup of our being instead of the world. That's, that's all that's going anyway. But, you know, to our makeup and our point of where we are, because that's what we're trying to do. And as we'll get to it on into the message, see, Peter is writing to people that had the same Holy Ghost experience or new birth that he had. Amen. All right. Yep. And in writing to them now, then he's to, you know, he's writing to those people. But liter listen now. Don't you ever think about the Bible as being something personal? Right? right. Amen. All right. See, Peter's, now listen. Peter is not just writing to them back there. Right. When we read this and read it with right understanding, you realize he's talking to you and I. Amen. Right? He's not, you know, we, we say, well, he was back there talking to them and he was doing it. No, the Bible is supposed to be to you and I. Amen. What they see and what others have seen before us has got to be the same way. That's right. You've got to have your own experience in Jesus Christ. 
And it's not to, like we Baptists used to believe and say, well, we got the Holy Ghost. And of course, he didn't like to use the word ghost a lot, but they'd say, we got the Holy Spirit. And he'd say, well, how do you know you got, well, it come on the day of Pentecost. Yeah. If you wasn't ever there, you wouldn't hear that. But brother uh, Luis is shaking his head a little bit because that's the way we were speaking. We were saying, well, hey, we got it because it come back there. Well, what does that matter? You know, that would be like saying, uh, well, I've got corn in my garden. Why? Because there was corn, uh, you know, 4,000, 6,000 years ago. There was corn, and I've got it. No, it ain't until I plant it, and I've had trouble doing that. But, you know, but trying to get to a point of seeing that the Bible is speaking to you and I. It is not just talking to these people here. See, Peter was telling these people here how to attain unto the place where he was, but that's supposed to be transmitted down to you and I to where that it's speaking personally to you. Right. Uh, have you ever noticed in Malachi, you know, we, we quote that a lot. Malachi 4 says, Behold, I send you, Elijah the prophet. All right. See, then you make it personal. You remember Brother Brown's wife, said, she was reading that and she went and she was wondering whether to marry Brother Branham or not. And she read that and it says, behold, I send you Elijah the prophet. Yeah, right. Amen. Well, we ought to make all of those things personal to us. Amen. Right. All the scriptures should be speaking to you and I. Right. As Wade was saying one time, we talk about Abraham and his faith, but that was back there. Right. That was another man. That was another situation. That was another time. See, you and I must have the experience of Jesus Christ personally to us, and then the Bible is written to you and I. Amen. All right? Now, we tried too much. You know, we've tried two or three services talking about that Peter is saying that he's speaking to them of like precious faith. Now, the Bible, listen to me. The Bible is not written to the world. You say, well, no, just listen. The Bible is only written to those that are in Christ Jesus because the, the Bible says no man can call Jesus the Christ except it be by the new birth, right? Born again experience, baptism of the Holy Ghost, the words you use, all right? So then in, in that, we ought to consider and think about it that it's a wonderful thing that we can be able to read it because it's written personally to you and I. Yeah, right. Well, that's for somebody else to do. That's for the, no, no. How would you put Hebrews 13, eight there? That's right. Hebrews 13, eight said he's the same. What? Yesterday, today, and forever. All right. Whatever he has been, he has to still be. And what he is now, he has to always be to make it correct. All right. So then we'd have it in the line. See, not, not saying that it's, well, it's so much, this is for them and this is for that and this is for this. No, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The people's the one that changes, right? And we change because of what we're taught, right? The churches we were in, the things uh, you know, it, it, it's, that's our problem Amen. is what we've been taught, right. Yep. right? Now, not throwing off on anybody that taught it because thank God for people that did teach us, Amen. right? Yes. Thank God for somebody that the Bible would say, even if Jesus is preached, what? By contention, which means argument, you know, no, 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 we're not supposed to argue. But the Bible said, if it's preached even by arguing, yep. somebody sitting around could hear it. Amen and receive it where the two that would be arguing might be, be both of them lost. Right. All right. But see, it's, it's to you and I, it's not written. And that's what I'm trying to deal with now to try to talk about that. If there has ever been, now let's take Hebrews 13, eight in the right way. The same yesterday, today and forever. If there's anybody that was ever 
saved, born again, whatever you want to use in the terminologies. And if anybody else ever reaches that place, then God is obligated to give them the new birth. Right? Okay. So then we go to the scripture where it says, and the promise is unto you, your children, to them that are far off, Gentiles coming on down towards us, right? And then to the entire world. All right? Well, see, if ever anybody ever received, that's where our points, we try to, we try to uh, uh, what would you call it? We try to theorize, theorize it or figure out some theory, you know, and, and try to make it look good about our thoughts. But, you know, why make it that way? Why not just be what the Bible says? And if anybody ever received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, Anywhere. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then if it's not offered for every age thereafter, then he's not Hebrews 13, 8. Right. 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 Now we know that it came on the day of Pentecost, right? Amen. We read about it coming on the day of Pentecost. But what good is that, as I said a moment ago? What good is that until it happens to you and me? Amen. Right? right? Yeah. See, then why would we not hold to the point that it's the same. Yes, but now, Brother Dale, you, 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 you're, you know, you got to put this here, and you got to put this here, put that. Why? If there was ever any person ever received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Right? And any person ever re reached that position again, God would be obligated, Right? If anybody was ever healed, true? If you believe the same way that person did that was healed, God's obligated to heal you. Not obligated because of obligated to me and you. He's obligated because he said he would. It's not obligated to me and you as people. God owes us nothing. We owe him everything. But yet he said he would do it. Right? See, then the Bible then is not written to sinners. Now, a sinner can pick it up and read it. You don't misunderstand. A sinner can pick up the Bible and read it, right? And he can come to the point of getting saved, right? But you're not putting the Bible in the correct order because it's not written to him. It's written to the person that becomes born again. Like to me, if I was overseas and I'd write my wife a letter and I'd say, tell the church, I said, hello, and so and so and so and so. Y'all do this, that, and the other. That would all, that's part of the letter. But who's the letter to? I'm not writing to the church. I'm writing to her to tell her what to tell the church. See, something personal. All right? See, then we spend a lot of time going through uh, justification, sanctification, the baptism of the Holy Ghost and coming down to each stage and, and uh, transpiring. And then we come to here where Peter and Peter is writing this letter and is speaking to you and I. So think about it. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ to them, to you that have obtained like Precious faith, what? With us, right? How? Through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Who's he writing to? He's not writing to the world. He's writing to those that are in Christ Jesus, right? We went over that and over that last week and, and, and all. And if you ever need any more, I've got plenty of them. You ought to see what's stacked on my desk at home. See, see we, went, we read some of these, and I didn't give these to them. But Brother Branham said on the message, earnestly contending for the faith. He said it's, he's addressing this to the church, not to the outside world. Right. Yep. It's not to the Bible. 
He's talking about Jude and he's talking about Ephesians, two scriptures. All right? He goes on over to the believer's position in Christ. To the faithful in Christ Jesus. Now this letter is addressed to those not to the world, outside world, not to, see, now watch, not a sermon. Because now listen, I read, I brought this one. Because you see, a sermon is a sermon to everybody. Right? right. See, I'm preaching a sermon. Yes. That means the lost can hear it and the saved can hear it. Amen. And through the sermon, the sinner can come to the position of getting to salvation, right? right. See, but it's not to him. Amen. But it's a sermon part. Now watch. To the faithful in Christ Jesus. Now this letter's addressed to those that's not to the outside the world. Now, it's not a sermon. Paul wasn't preaching here to the unsaved. And he's written to the Ephesians. Watch him. He was preaching to the saved. The called out, the separated, and set aside and faithful in the call. See, he's not, the Bible is not written. The position of a believer in Christ. That was a believer's position in Christ. It says, this epistle, the letter to the Ephesians was written to believers, not to the outside world. This is believers. See? It's not for the outside world. I gave you a bunch, but I, I've got a bunch more. Anybody wants them, you're welcome to read where your prophet said that. But listen, let me state it this way. Why can't we believe truth no matter who says it? I don't mind quoting uh, Billy Graham. I don't mind quoting the Pope. No, no problem if he's telling the truth. Right? I have no problem amening what he's saying if it's the truth. Why? Because it's the Word of God. Well, as I say in the start, well, why couldn't we believe it then that if anybody ever received the Holy Spirit, anywhere, than any other person down through there. And that's what the scripture said. And as many as the Lord our God shall call and brought his brother around and say, he said, as long as he's calling, the apostolic blessing is in succession or is available to you and I right. as long as he's calling. Amen. But see, we want to make it to where we, we, we want to do. And I'll read the quote in a minute where brother Brown says, we get just enough Holy Ghost so we quit lying and cheating. But said, God wants us to grow. But you see, that's the part of it. We say, well, it's not here. Well, why? Because I don't believe it. Now, who gave you the right to say you don't believe it? Well, I got a right to say I don't believe it. Okay, go ahead and say you don't believe it because that's where it's going to kill you. Do you mean it's not right just because you don't believe it? I remember one, one time Brother Branham was going over to, was talking about going to Africa and this man wrote him a letter and the way he wrote the letter, he said, we, we don't want you over here because you believe in this, 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 and this, and this. They come to find out that we was the one man, you know, it was him, one man. They wouldn't know we to it, huh? but see, it's easy to say we, we don't believe it this way. One brother, he used to say, uh, we don't believe it. We, we believe, we believe. And I wanted to say, well, why do you believe? I don't want to know what we believe in Lula, Georgia as a group. Amen. Come on. Right, right. I want to know what we believe as individuals Amen. that make up a group. Right. Amen. See? Then it's not we. Amen. See? It's those that are in Christ Jesus. But you see, that's the doctrine that I told you that, that in the statue of a perfect man that we just read in Peter, some believes you get everything when you're born again. You got every bit of these things. He's right. The other group believes you don't get nothing hardly, you know, just, just enough to be a, a, a better person. And then when you'd say, well, well, Brother Branham said it's the same Holy Ghost that fell on the day of Pentecost. You know, I don't believe that. Well, who give you the right to say you don't believe it? 
Are you the prophet? Are we supposed to follow you? You know, there's the we, there's the point that we get, right? But see, why wouldn't we believe? You know, you know, you could walk right across over here to these church and they're Baptist basic. And you could say Hebrews 13, eight, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if anybody ever received the new birth, then it would have to be for every person in every age and every time that would ever believe it the correct way. You know what? They'd say, amen. You know why? Because they've never been taught the things of the people of the message has been taught. Some of you have said and heard that the Holy Ghost is not here like it was in the book of Acts. Well, I'm not against that part. I'm glad the Lord showed that to, to a sister. She come to me the other day. She said, Brother Dale said, the Lord spoke to him and told me, said, you're not just trying to tell us we're lost. You're trying to tell us, you know, we're lost and we need to be saved. That's fine because that's in it. But you're telling us that we're saved. Because, see, I can't talk to you until you get born again as the same Holy Spirit. Right? See, I, the words I come across will be a sermon to you. Amen. Right? That's what Paul. That's right. A sermon. Mm -hmm. A sermon can bring a sinner to Christ. Right. But then when a sinner comes to Christ, he's just a baby. Right. He needs something to help him grow. Amen. So that's what Peter was saying. Amen. I've received this faith. Yep. I have this precious faith. And I'm speaking to those that have the same precious faith that I have. Amen. All right. See, then it's not written that way to the world. Amen. It's written to those that are in Christ Jesus. Okay. See, then that, that to me, you, you've got to put it that way because how else could you put it? You say, well, I just don't believe it because I don't see it. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. And like I said the other day, do you realize that this message has went around the world for the people of the land? Where has that ever been in time? Yeah, Paul, they had, had the known world note of Paul. Yeah, but that's the only time you have any thoughts whatsoever. And it certainly didn't cover the world. This message has gone around the world. Right. 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 That it, in itself is a miracle. Amen. To realize that people that never had an opportunity to, to hear about Jesus Christ can hear a prophet yes. speaking about Jesus Christ. Amen. Not just somebody talking about it or some point. Right. Yeah. What a wonderful thing. Amen. But we think, well, well, we just don't see it. Don't see what? Like I told you. And I know, see, you, you, people get upset with me when I make statements. But I've asked you to be sensible. Go to the book of Acts and write down how many miracles happened in the book of Acts. Read the book of Acts and write down how many miracles took place. How many healings? How many of the dead raised? How many of this? And you know what Brother Branham said? He said there was more in one service in his ministry than the entire book of Acts. I named off the other day a lot of things that had happened right here. Per number would be more than the miracles in the book of Acts. But yet you don't believe it because... See, now, there's the point. I'm not trying to tell you you're lost. You must find out from God whether you're lost or not. I'm trying to talk to you about salvation and what it is to be saved. I'm not against anything like that. I'm not trying to preach to condemn people that don't believe the way that I believe. I've never done that. I've tried to tell the truth. Amen. I've tried to preach the truth. Right. 
That's my goal is to preach the truth. All right? Not to try to tell somebody else they're wrong. But to try to preach the truth to where that you and I can have an opportunity. I want my family, I want this church to have an opportunity to hear the truth. Well, who do you think you are? I'm me. Who do you think you are? Solve that problem. What's the point of bringing up that thought? I, I'm a pastor of a church trying to, to direct a group of people into the Word of God to see where Christ is at, Amen. into our hearts and our lives, Amen. not what's out there. Right. You've never heard me get up here and preach long sermons about the woman getting in the White House and Russia coming after oil and all these things, and just you know, more, more people just sit there and just shout and holler and scream when they hear those things, and you start talking about salvation. You start getting down to where people live at. Amen. I'm just trying to get you to think. Amen. Think for yourself. What is that old saying? I don't like its modern terminologies. What is that? Think out of the box. <laughs> well, <laughs> that don't fit me. Amen. I'm not in the box. Right. Right. Amen. Right? It's supposed to mean think for yourself, right? Because the box is what everybody else thinks, and you think out of the box. That's just a simple terminology. I know what these things are about, but that don't fit to me. Well, I want to talk to you about thinking out of the box, outside the box or something. I want to touch that soul that's within there. Amen. To where that you can make a decision yourself. Because that's salvation. Right? That's salvation for you to make your own decision. All right? And we spent a lot of time talking about the new birth and how that it would, would be that, you know, that we need these things. All right? But now we've come to the place of reaching a position to where that we're talking about what these disciples were talking about. But see, there's where we go. See, we go, well, I don't see it like it is in the book of Acts. Why not? Wow. Now, I'm asking you a simple question. You be simple yourself. If Jesus Christ is not here today, just like he was in the book of Acts, then Hebrews 13, 8 is wrong. Amen. The problem is you and I. The problem is not God. It's never been the Holy Ghost that was taken away. Show me that in the prophet's message or the Bible. It was never the Holy Spirit that was taken away. It was the Word that began to be ate down because of our interpretations and ideas and things. And God can only work according to the amount of Word is there. Right? But now are you going to tell me that Luther and them didn't have the new birth? exactly like the day of Pentecost? Then where's Hebrews 13, 8? Right. Right. If you're going to say that we don't have it today. Yep. You know what a brother said to me one time? He asked me a question about it. He was sincere. I tried to be sincere. He was saying that nobody had the Holy Ghost like it was in the book of Acts. I said, well, Brother Branham was the one that said it. Now, I'm not telling you that I'm, and I'm telling you what Brother Branham said. He said he'd met people with the Holy Spirit the same as the day of Pentecost, 50 years before. He said, well, what do you think's wrong? I said, listen, I'm going to answer your question this way. I think a lot of people don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But I'm not saying, no way would I say that nobody didn't have it. I'm just saying a lot of people ain't got it and think they got it. Because what's wrong? I thought the Holy Spirit was to lead us to the Word. Amen. Well, let's see signs and wonders. Let's see. Oh, where has it ever been signs and wonders? Your prophet said it had to be the Word first. What does the Bible say? These signs shall run before the believers. 
No, that ain't exactly what the Bible says, is it? These signs shall follow them that believe. So you're trying to get signs, some kind of a doing. And Brother Brandon would speak of signs and wonders and speak of the Holy Ghost being here. That's what we want to get to in the message. But what I'm trying to do is to, is to make sure you understand. The Bible is written to them that have obtained like precious faith. Let's solve that. Whether we want to talk about gifts and signs and wonders and what this is, the Bible says Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Now, are you going to say the Bible's wrong? No, you're going to say, I don't understand it that way. Well, then what do you mean? If you don't understand it that way, what do you mean? Come on, it's time to be blunt and plain. What do you mean? If you believe he's not the same, then you got to have some reason for not believing it. I thought we believed that the canker worm, palm worm, locust, and the caterpillar ate the word down. But I thought we were supposed to believe that justification, sanctification, and the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the prophet coming on the scene was to bring that back exactly like the Scripture said it was. And you can see that Christ is here. But see, he's addressing this not to the world, but to those that have escaped the corruption, we read. He's addressing this to the church. Right. He's addressing it to those that are in Christ Jesus. Okay? Now, then... By addressing it to the same people that had the same experience he had, faith. The born-again experience, faith. Right here at the bottom of the pyramid, faith. All right? The new birth, whatever you want to call it. Born-again experience, new birth, baptism of the Holy Ghost. To me, it's all one and the same. One is not a little bit, and the other is a whole lot more, and this is a lot more. No, it's the same. All right? But see, think about it then. Peter, what are you doing? Who are you writing to? To those that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. Lula, Georgia. He's writing to you and I sitting here today. Right? We claim to have the new birth, right? We claim to have that baptism of the Holy Spirit, that new birth, the born again experience. My wife said the other day, she said, why do you keep saying all them three together? I want you to realize I believe all three of them is the same thing. Amen. It is the one and the same thing. You want the ones that I got laying on my desk at the house where Brother Branham says, or maybe they're in the office, where Brother Branham says, there's not but one Holy Spirit. There is not two Holy Spirits. All right. There's not but one new birth. There's many fillings, but one birth. They had one birth in the book of Acts, but then they had many fillings. Every time they would meet, the Holy Spirit would come down and would be great things, right? So you say, but I'd like to see that again. Well, what, you're never going to see it till you believe it. Seeing is not believing, right? The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible says, believe to see. Right? I believe to see. Because if you're waiting on something you can see, but see, that's where people don't want you to do that. They don't want you. They think you're trying to make something out of yourself to tell about experiences. Maybe we'll do it one day. I'm looking at people that have had experiences of things that take place. While we were rejoicing the other day, sister had had trouble with her hand, her arm. She couldn't raise it up, couldn't do with it. She just raised it up. 
right? Well, see, we don't, well, that could be anything. You know, that could be mental. Well, praise God, it happened. Whether it be mental, spiritual, or whatever it is, it happened. Let's see you do it. Oh. No. See, we don't believe it because it don't happen to us. But why not? Why can't we believe it because the Word says it? Amen. Right. Amen. But Peter, Peter, who are you writing to? I'm writing to them that have had the same new birth that I've had. Amen. Not the growth development of the stature of a perfect man. No, they were up into here because that was coming into, he had taught them for three and a half years. But the 3,000 outside only heard one sermon. That's why it was called babes in Christ, earnest of our inheritance. But you know what? They received the same Holy Spirit. Come on, get Peter on over there to Cornelius' house. Come on, Cornelius' house had only heard one or two little sermons or something or what had happened and sent for Peter to come. And Peter comes over and what? He said, who can forbid these to be baptized and they receive the Holy Spirit as we did at the beginning. You see, church, where we're at, don't you? So then, Peter, what are you going to do? I want to tell you how to come to the place that I have obtained. Now, this light, precious faith that I have, it come down through verse 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right along in there, everywhere it comes to the point. And he's talking about they that had obtained to right. like precious faith. All right. Then he says, add to your faith virtue. Amen. Now, add to your faith virtue. Okay. Yep. Now he's going to tell you how to come on up through the, the pyramid as to where he w- was at. But he's having to relate it back to where that when everybody would start it to sign. Right. So it's your faith. Right. Now faith is not a virtue. That's right. That's right. Faith is a birth. Amen. Right. Like I told you, babies are not born with virtues. They must develop virtues as they live. But they're birthed. See, then we must be born again. And how are we born again? Justification, sanctification, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Bringing you to the new birth. And Peter said, all right, now you got the new birth. Mm -hmm. We said, now what I want you to do is listen. He said, add to your new birth. He said, well, how do you know that's a new birth? We're going to let Brother Random read it, okay? You're supposed to have done listen to the message of it over and over. Right. Of the stature of perfect man, blasphemous names and all. Yes. 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 Huh? Yes. See, then it shouldn't be any strange thing to read from it right. unless you do like you do with me. Maybe you sleep through half of it and don't hear. I told you about the brother the other day. He said, what I heard of the message, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good point. But listen, we've done read these and come down with it, but I want to get the main point or thought into your mind today that it's always been the same Holy Spirit in every age. The Holy Ghost has been the same in every age. Mankind is what is different. You can only manifest what you have has been revealed to you. Right? See, then Peter says what? He says you must, he says you first what? He said add to your faith. Amen. Now let's take Brother Branham and let him read it to where you can follow that point and you'll see what he's talking about. Go ahead now to paragraph 141, number one on your notes. Listen to him. So he's reading Peter coming down and bringing it, bringing it, uh, let's see, 141. You got to you got to one you got to thirty three. Go up to one forty one. 
Uh, you got to 1A. Go to 1. That's 1A was the one we were using there a moment ago. Same thing. You can We can read it, but going up to a paragraph, which would be number 1 instead of 1A. I mess them up on that because I put 1A and then 1B. And, but go ahead. It's paragraph 141. Look. Now, here is what to do. What's the first thing? Now, Brother Brown is explaining Peter, right? Have faith and be born again. That's laying the foundation. Now, what's the foundation? What's the foundation to the pyramid? Faith. Everything up to here is going to be a manifestation of a greater faith. And it will be faith, but it's just different as it's working through what you're doing with it. We're not into that yet. We're just getting into these parts. Look, he said, have faith and be born again. Now, there's your faith that Peter says. Add to your faith virtue. See, all right. So to get this faith, what do we do? It says, watch. Then after you lay the foundation, secondly, you add to your foundation. See, add to your faith. You got to get the foundation first. First, pour your foundation faith, then, your to, then to your faith, add virtue. Amen. Now listen, it's called your faith. Yes. I know I've been through this. I'll keep going over it and over it. Amen. Because it's clicking to some and some are realizing what's taking place. So if I have to repeat it, I don't worry about it. Right. I didn't realize I remembered it after it was said. Brother Donnie said that he remembered me saying in the seals years ago, that said, when I get through and this comes out to this place, said, I'll start back and I'll preach justification, sanctification, and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Because, see, there's nothing new in the Bible. It's all that. It's all the new birth. The seals, the plague, the vials, the thunders, all is to bring the revelation of Jesus Christ, not the revelation of the Antichrist. It's the revelation of Jesus Christ to you. All right, look. See, then you add faith. Go ahead. Go ahead with number, the next one, number two. This is paragraph 102. Notice you must be born again. And when you're born again, you can't be born again without having faith. That's right. So you see on my chart here, I got the very foundation. Faith is the foundation of all of it. For without faith, it is impossible to please God. Okay. Now listen, it's your faith. What is the new birth? What is the new birth? Is it not the birth of the word? Right? You receive the word and the word was quickened to you by the Holy Spirit, right? All that we talked down through there, just in case, same thing. All right, what is it? What is the new birth? It's the born again experience. It's Christ coming to live in you, but he gave it to you and it's called yours. Why would Peter say that? Add to your faith. He didn't say add faith. We're going to get to that when we get down to where that we're going to have to talk about the, how many ads. Because Brother Brown said there's only seven ads. Now you look up and down through there, you got a lot of things. But he says there's seven ads. All right? But just stay here with me. Do we get to that point? See, because what's he doing? Faith is a foundation of all things. So he gives you, listen, he gives you the new birth. He births the word in you. That makes you and him one, right? In the new birth. But it's your new birth. You are the one that's born again. So it's your faith. This is my eye, the prophet said. God gave it to me. He gave the new birth on the day of Pentecost. That's right. That's right. right? Yep. See, then faith is not a virtue, it's a birth. Right. You've got to have something to start with. Right. Right. A baby is not born with all of this. As I said, it's not born with these virtues. It can't talk, it can't do anything, it can't drive a car, it can't do anything. It's just a birth. Right. Yep. Right. The only thing it can do is cry. Right? Well, you know what? That's true with you and I, because the only thing we can do is cry out to God. But he gave us the new birth. 
and it's the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. All right? It's the foundation. You got to have a foundation to put something on. The church is built upon a revelation of Jesus Christ, right? Upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So there's your new birth, faith. So the prophet then, what's he describing? How to get born again, right? Have faith and be born again. You cannot be, you know, you cannot be saved without having the new birth. That's the salvation. Right? See, then you talk about adding. Get to birth. And you'll see why Brother Branham spent so much on it. I gave it over and over. But was you listening? He said, I call, make an altar call. He said, I want him to come up and be born again. Receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He said, just like it happened on the day of Pentecost. But he said, the people come up thinking, well, these are already saved, they're already this, that, and they want to get them to speak in tongues. Right? Where they can believe that they got the baptism. He said, no. He said, it's one and the same. He said, I give the altar call for you to come forth and be saved. Amen. You say, yeah, but you spent all of this time explaining. Right, I explained what he said. Because right. he knew you didn't come to the altar and get it all at one time. Right. He said that. Right. Yeah. How many times did I quote that? He said, very few people will believe all the way to receiving right. the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's right. So he knew then and he would say, okay, you have repented of your sins. Yeah. That's justification. Now go on to sanctification. And then go on to get somebody to pray for you about the baptism. You know why? Because he knew we didn't understand. Because the best we'd have done was try to get somebody to speak in tongues. Or tell them that it's already saved because they cried or believed or shouted. See, Brother Brandon was having to face an age and a time when it was pitiful when he walked out there. That's why it says that this Malachi 4, what? He's going to restore the faith of the fathers. The people had no faith of the fathers. It didn't mean they didn't have a new birth, but they didn't have any growth development. And they just shouted and cried and done everything. And he tried his best to get people to believe it, but they wouldn't believe it. You know why they wouldn't believe it? Because of the way they've been taught. You know why people today can't believe? Because the way they've been taught. Well, brother so-and-so says it's this way. Hallelujah. Who's he? But brother Dale, I or anybody else, it don't make no difference to me. But you see, I'm not talking... My ministry has never been talking to or trying to get people. Now, listen, please. I try my best to get everybody in the world saved that I can, right? I preach for that. But I know that the ministry I have doesn't deal with that type. I'm not the one to get people to the altar to crying and praying out to God for salvation. I'm the one that's trying to get those that have that to listen and growth development. That's always been there. Well, I can't help it, but I do. I believe still. Brother Branham, like I said, Brother Branham preached souls in prison. And the altar filled with people to be saved. I still believe the Holy Ghost can bring people in. No matter which one of the ministries he's using. He can bring us in on it, all right? But see, you must be born again. And when you're born again, you can't be born again without having faith. So there's your foundation, faith. Yep. Listen as we go on through. Go to number, well, the scripture. Go to the scripture and let's read it. Go to number three, Acts 2.38. Listen what happened. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Listen. Amen. For the promise is only just to a few people. Maybe one or two here or somebody here might get that. No, no, no. It says, is unto you. Yep. Amen. 
and to your children and to all that are far off, Gentiles, even as many as the Lord our God shall call, Jew, Gentiles, everything. Now, that's the Bible. Then why would we want to think about the Holy Spirit being different in ages and things? The new birth is the new birth. Mm -hmm. But you see then, uh, like I said, I'm not the ministry to, to preach because if I was, I would just try to make you feel good and get you to do it. But my ministry is to settle down and say, all right, hold on just a minute. Let's think this thing over. Am I all the way up to the top of this pyramid? Or where am I at? You had never thought about it? You had never asked God, where am I at? You remember a sister? I think her name was Shepherd. Blasphemous names. Did she even had a dream about it and wondered where she was at? The prophet took her dream and showed right where she was at. He said God accepted her foundation. Her faith. That's in the dream. It's in blasphemous names. If you listen to it, you're supposed to hurt it. But look, number four, this is from Merlin Church Age. Listen, our Church Age book. Look what he says. And in every age, in every age is the age of the Holy Ghost for the true believers. I say in every age, the evidence was the same. Those who heard the word took it and believed it. Right? Amen. Same Holy Ghost in every age. Well, I just don't believe we got it like they did in the book of Acts. What do you mean? Why not just say you got it? Yeah. Listen, why don't you at least say I got it, but it might not be like it is in the book of Acts. No, you're not saying that away. You're saying I don't have it and you don't have it. Come on, folks. It's time to quit playing. Yeah. Look at the next one, which is taken from blasphemous names, where he's talking about the sister's dream. But the five streams you see coming down through their tempers this together, it has been the Holy Spirit that made the Ephesian church. It was the Holy Spirit that birthed the Smyrnian church, the Holy Spirit that gave the Pergamos, that gave the Pergamos church, the Titan church in the dark ages. Come on. It's the Holy Spirit that's built that bride, the elect that's pulled out of all the organizational organization system down through the ages like that. Amen. There's an elected, a predestinated bride of Jesus Christ that the Holy Spirit has called out of, out the elect, and it's been the Holy Spirit, watch him, it's been the Holy Spirit in this age, that age, that age, that, 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 on up to the top, the Holy Spirit. All right. That should be enough, right? And now as in the individuals, these virtues and things are for, you know, knowledge and temper are added to your faith. Then when the capstone comes, which it hasn't come yet, that's what your prophet said, the Holy Spirit cements it together. There is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That's why it's so short today. Why? Why is it so short? Because you've got people with a new birth. You realize on Azusa Street, they received <laughs> the baptism of the Holy Ghost just like the book of Acts. Yeah. The outpouring of the Holy Ghost on Azusa Street yeah. was the same Holy Spirit yeah. that fell back in the Bible time. Yeah. The Bible's wrong or your prophet's wrong if you don't believe it that way. Yeah. No. I'm not trying to argue. That's what I'm saying. I'm not trying to preach something to try to prove somebody wrong. I'm trying to preach it to where you and I can have an opportunity to receive Christ Amen. and talk about it being the same. Let's take it to, Amen. let's just talk about this, him being this, this Holy Spirit being the same at Pentecost. So go ahead. Let's start number six. Believe us thou this. Peter said on the day of Pentecost, it's for you and for your children and for them that's far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And every person that enters into the baptism of the Spirit can have the same kind of Holy Ghost that they got on the day of Pentecost. 
Uh -huh. Hallelujah, they said. I believe it's true. Not something that looked like it, but the real thing. Same kind of Holy Ghost that fell back there falls now the same kind. The real Holy Ghost brings forth the same kind of an evidence and thing like that they had back there comes with the same Holy Ghost. You say, but I just don't see that. He said, just the same Holy Spirit that fell back there on the day of Pentecost. Now, he didn't have any trouble saying that. Why can't we go to the number seven? Look what he says. Where I think Pentecost failed, 55. The same Holy Spirit was upon Christ was his mantle that God gave him. The anointing of the Holy Spirit. Now, that was his mantle, right? The anointing of the Holy Spirit. And they went up at Pentecost and waited in the upper room that when Jesus, that which was the antitype of Elijah, was taken up from death and resurrected, he sent back the mantle, the same Holy Spirit that was upon him fell on the church. And he said, the things that I do shall you do and greater thing, a double portion of the same Holy Ghost that was upon Christ is upon the church. And Elisha took that mantle and walked down to the river and struck it because that's Elisha and Elijah, right? Come on. All right, go to the next one, which is oneness, preacher 62. What is it? You got to get with the word. Get yourself killed out. Now, listen, I love this one because it's true about me, you, and all of us but it's still the truth. I'm persuaded that many of us friends have received the Holy Ghost. But what's our trouble? But we just receive enough Holy Ghost in us to make us to a place where we don't want to lie. We don't want to steal. We want to, don't want to do anything. But God wants to fill every fiber of his church. He wants to fill you, your thinking. He wants to fill your mind. Every bit of you, he goes on to say, completely, totally dead. See, that's what's wrong with the church. Yeah. What's wrong with the church? They got to birth. But yep, Branham never denied Pentecostal people with a new birth. No. That's right. He said they had it just like the book of Acts. That's right. yep. But he said you need a growth development. Right? Adoptions and the things that goes with it. Amen. We'll get to those things as we go along. But the main thing is get to the birth. Amen. Are you truly born again? Amen. Right. Just remember, now we'll put this and settle it. The Holy Spirit will act the same on every person Amen. that it's ever in. Right? Right. And they're going to act like on one person, but not act like it on the other person. Now, forget that. So then what's been our wrong? What was my point back there? And we were talking about justification, sanctification, baptism, and the Holy Ghost. When I said, here's a prophet said, women overseas, when they see Jesus Christ, they fold their arms and walk out. Women here just keep getting more naked and nakeder. But God, they say they got the same Holy Ghost. Now there's something wrong. The Holy Ghost only acts one way. It's the same in every age. And acts the same. Our trouble is what he said. We get just enough Holy Ghost to quit lying and cheating. Well, that's just, no. That's a birth. The birth makes you a baby. The birth don't make you a statue of a perfect man. That's what I'm trying to get at. Peter's trying to tell you how to grow up. Trying to tell Lula. Tell you how to grow up. Me how to grow up. Right? Go on to the next one. Uh, that's the rejected king. Let's see. Wait a minute, we're on number nine. All right, yeah. The same Holy Spirit, roll this up, the same Holy Ghost that fell on the day of Pentecost. I want you, which we all know that that, that that was the birth of the new church. 
Now watch it. If that same Holy Spirit don't bring the same experience to you, then you got a different Holy Spirit. Now, how many point? How many do you need? There's only one Holy Spirit. So now, what's he saying? He's not saying you got a Holy Spirit that made you do this, but we got a Holy Spirit that's genuine. No. He's saying you got something wrong. Right? Is that what he's saying? If that same Holy Spirit that don't don't bring the same experience, then you got a different Holy Spirit than what that was. Exactly right. If it don't make you live a sacrificial life and a life full of joy and pleasure and the baptism of the Spirit leading you into signs and wonders and miracles and things, there's something happened. Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. What's wrong with the church? They're following their own ideas and opinions, right? Instead of even believing what God said, right? Even to think about it. Go ahead to the next one. We won't get all these read, but at least you'll get enough. This is taking off redemption and completeness. He says the same Holy Spirit fell then, falls now. And we'll go plumb on from that time to the end of time. It'll go right on through. It's our bread. They were fed with the natural bread. We are fed with the spiritual. So then what fell back there has to keep going on and down. Okay, go to the next one. Read Feist if we can. Go to 12. 11, excuse me. <laughs> Expect to see. Well, now, the same Holy Spirit that fell on the day of Pentecost that's healed the sick back there, it's been here in the church all the time. Yes. Okay. But the thing of it is, you don't know how to make it work for you. Amen. Now, there's our problem. Amen. We don't know how to make it work, so we say it's not there. And then we, now watch it. Come on, are we right? Then somebody does speak of God working in their lives. <laughs> Anointed ones can do that too. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay. But what's the matter with you? You mean anointed ones can do it and you claim the Holy Ghost and can't? Okay. Well, now, Brother Dale, okay, well, all right. Come on. Time to put it on the line. That's right. Right? That's right? Then you start telling about things that happened in your life and people just draw up. Well, it never happened to me. I wish you would. I wish every one of you would write down at least one thing that's happened in your life. One great experience has happened in your life. And I'll come right here and I'll read every one of them for the glory of God. Because church, we're not out there playing with this silly stuff. Well, you don't have nothing, I don't have nothing. We just sat around waiting on the bus. For up. We've seen God raise the dead. We've seen him heal all kinds of sicknesses. We've seen all kinds of miracles take place. That are not questioned. Right? But yet, see, I can tell, say, well, the Lord changed my blood type from A negative to A, I mean, A positive to A negative. Well, I was just a haphazard. Well, do you see? Why can't we believe what God has done with us? Ryan would be glad to get up here and talk about his daughter, wouldn't you? Gabby would be glad to make a statement or two about their little daughter that is not supposed to be here today. I still think he's Hebrews 13, 8, sir. I think what's wrong with us is we're not believing it. Watch him. But the thing of it is, you don't know how to make it work for you. Listen. Now, there's the thing that makes it work is faith to believe. And when you believe and take him at his word, that's the lifeline. It cannot fail. 
Go ahead to the next one. Peter said on the day, this is the interval. Peter said on the day of Pentecost, Acts 2, he said, For the promises unto you and to your children, and to them that are far off, and as many as the Lord our God shall call. The same Holy Spirit that fell was for every generation, even to the Gentiles. I, I love that. Those that were always considered far off, even as the many. And it, listen, roll this up now. As long as God's still calling, God's still giving the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. But, but, but so and so said it was this way. Okay. And then may I ask the question are we going to believe so and so or are we going to believe the Bible? Amen. Which one are we going to believe? All right. Look at the next one. I love this part. Listen, this is the hidden life. You're talking about it's kind of makeup, you know, emotion or mental makeup. Uh, we don't have to take something the devil would hand down. Listen, but every believer that comes from the altar to the consecrated life to the baptism of the Holy Ghost can get not only a mouthful, listen, but a soul full of the original baptism of the Holy Ghost that fell on the day of Pentecost. Not enough. How about it? Jump over. Jump over to number fifteen, brothers, and we'll call. We'll quit. This is from Questions and Answers in 1954. And I wrote it up just down at the bottom of the quote. For He's talking about ungodly spirits and living in human beings because that's what's happened down through time. You ought to see it today. Yeah. Now, someday these men will die. Now, watch him. He's talking about the ungodly spirits. Yeah. And if there's another generation, they'll come right down on them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Demons coming down generation to generation. Watch him. Right. God takes his man, but never his spirit. This is the same Holy Spirit that they received on Pentecost. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can grab a couple. Uh, I was wanting to get to one more because I want to bring it. Uh, jump over to number 22. The oneness of unity. Huh? Look what he says. He's on the service. He's praying for people and things are taking place and watch. He said, if you couldn't walk, stand to your feet. If you're blind, take off your shades from your eyes. You can see. Watch him. Roll it on up a little where everybody can see it. The Holy Spirit passed through this place just now in a confirmation of the word. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Watch him. A wind like went over the building. How many could feel that when it went through here? See, raise your hand. Be honest with yourself. That wind that passed through the building, that's the Holy Spirit. And watch him. Say it and it shall be done. Like a great moving wind. Loving wind went whoosh right down across through here, and I heard it as it crossed over the audience. You heard it and felt it too. It's his presence. All now that feel different, all that feel that you're healed and everything, you know, it's in Christ Jesus. What was that? Just like the Holy Spirit come on the day of Pentecost. Come right down. The wind just swept over here. How many is a witness? Raise your hand. Everyone honest with you? No, see? It's the same Holy Spirit. The same Holy Spirit comes by the same word. Blessed be the name of the Lord. That's one. And drop down, drop to number 23. Because we'll get these two because it's two different accounts of the Holy Spirit taking doing that. Because this one's taken off the handwriting on the wall. 
And he says, the other night. Now, he's referring back. Now, watch him. He's got to get it together now. He's referring back to the, because that was on uh, 58, 130. And on 58, 128 was the oneness message. The other night, if there would happen to be one, uh, be, a, be one stranger, we had the most thrilling thing that I've heard in many years of the personal coming down of the Holy Spirit, just like it did in the Bible. Right here, the noise like a thunder roaring coming out of the heavens and the Spirit of the Lord coming through the building like an unseen wind that was shaken and taking it, the people, as he went through. Many of them in here are still witnesses. How many is here to witness it just exactly the way it did on the day of Pentecost? Okay. Listen, listen. Okay, yeah. And just praying while in prayer. No emotions. Now watch him. And just praying while in prayer. No emotions. No running like they did at the day of Pentecost. See, not, they weren't running around. They were sitting there. But the same Holy Spirit come in as a rushing mighty wind with a roar that I thought first when it was coming that it was an airplane. Watch him now that had swept down into the building and Dr. Lee Vale here thought it was, it sounded like the reversing of the wind in a pipe uh, organ. Now watch him. And he looked around to the organ and it's an electric organ. He thought it was the sound in the, you know, the thing. Then he heard it was coming from above and went right down, come down here and around to the pulpit. No. What? It was a glorious experience. Okay. Now if I can find the other one. Okay. That's all right. There was another experience where he was talking about it in a line and he says, did you feel it? He said, there is the same Holy Spirit. So why wouldn't we want to believe that it's the same Holy Spirit had always been here? Why wouldn't we want to believe that it's been in every age and been forever a believer? that would ever believe it because if we don't believe it, we can't have the new birth. If we don't have the new birth, like on the day of Pentecost, then we can't start up the stature of a perfect man. There's the trouble. People don't believe it. Come on, musician. There's the trouble. That's what I was reading. The trouble is what? The people don't believe the same Holy Spirit that was on the day of Pentecost is the same Holy Spirit that's here right now to save you. So thereby, God can't bring it to pass. And watch, even those, am I quoting him? We get just enough Holy Ghost to stop this. Uh, even those who have the same Holy Spirit doubt the presence of God being it real and, and it being like it was in the book of Acts. Why? Why would we not believe it? Yeah, but I just don't see the signs and wonders. There will never be to the Gentile dispensation another prophet. The prophet has come and gone. He had the signs, the resurrection, and all of the things. It's not promised for us to do those things. But I do love what the prophet said. After the door of this Gentile church is go, God will anoint a church, and he will do in one year what theologists tried to do in 2000, but said he's doing it now. That's all the questions and answers. Brother Brown said there'll be such a baptism of the Holy Ghost that'll come one day that'll fill every fiber of our being and take us into rapture. When are we going to believe God is here? See, if we don't believe he's here, he can't work. Oh, yeah, but he can. No, no, come on. Don't, let's don't get out of the Bible with our own theology. Jesus could not heal in certain places. He had to take the person outside or either turn out everybody to get them out of there. Why? And the Bible said he couldn't do no great miracles in one city. He said, because of their unbelief. You believe it was almighty God, don't you? Well, then if he's almighty God, why couldn't he work? Because of that unbelief. What do you think, Brother Brown, would be standing there trying to explain to the people about the baptism of the Holy Ghost and seeing that unbelief that was sitting out in front of him as dark objects and things, hooded things over people's eyes and face. And he begged God. He said, I laid before God. Now, these are a quote. He said, I laid before God 
to get this gift to work. He would lay before God and then beg God to come and work that gift in the church that they could see Christ. Right? It's because of their unbelief, they couldn't follow it. So look at it now, what's happening around the message, people, of what they're doing. They're turning against him, calling him a false prophet. They're calling him everything in the book. I like what the brother said. said, well, uh, that's a false prophet. Praise the Lord. We found out one thing. God has prophets, false or true. So if he's got a false, it's got to be true. So praise the Lord. There's got to be a true one somewhere. Right? So we believe God has sent us a prophet. The Holy Ghost to direct us all the way through. Developed into a man and the great signs and wonders. But we're not left empty handed. Now this is what I wrote on my desk and left. You mean to tell me that we think that we're at the end of the world. Right? We believe we're at the end of the world. We're not making dates and times and seasons, right? But we believe it's the end of the world, right? We believe the end of all things has come upon us. And you mean to tell me that God is not here the way he was there? We'll go back through the message and show where it gets greater and greater and greater. What was back there? Brother Brandon, my God, I had them there, I had to bypass them. He said the same Holy Ghost that fell back there, he said fell here falls here and see we think that that Holy Spirit is not here for that you mean to tell me God is ending this thing up and going to take somebody in a rapture when there's not going to be a God moving among us it's like I told you though you know what the problem is people say I don't have it you don't have it but when I get it I'll tell you how to get it Every doctrine there is, you want to stand up four hours and talk about them, every doctrine that there is in this message has got a man standing in front of it to tell you that when I tell you when it's here. Oh, but they don't say that. Come on, be sensible and listen. Think about it. Let's stand. What do we got? See, I believe the Holy Spirit has always been the same. I believe the Word was eaten down and promised to be restored. But we got to confess He's here. In the other, and from <laughs> you mean we're to end the whole thing and don't believe God is with us? <laughs> well, I just don't see him. Open your eyes, but you're not going to do it. Well, you go to doubt somebody that tells you they have. I'm doing everything I can to believe it. And I've seen him manifest 
himself. From the dead raised, the sick healed, all kind of things. See, church, there's a late hour. Anybody have a need? The altar's open. See, I believe Jesus Christ to be the Son. The same He was, He still is. And He told of great sin. And He said, if from this fountain you'll never thirst again for there is a river that flows from deep within and there ability to believe you. Thank you. We thank you. Thank he stands here confessing it, and we confess with him that by your stripes he's healed. Yes. Now let the great Holy Spirit that was on the day of Pentecost come down and just cleanse out everything that would be anything wrong and heal this body. Take away this blood pressure and this sugar condition and things. And Father, we believe you. We thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Anybody else?
brother's got physical needs in his body. He's got things that's bothering him. My brother's prayed for him about smoking. It's really working. And we believe it. And Father, we just ask you to come down and, and cleanse out all of these hurtings and the problems in our brother. This prayer call will be a contact. And Lord, we ask you to come and save his soul. That you'd speak to him, Lord, and bring him to you. And let him, Lord, feel your, feel your presence and love with him. Because we believe it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anybody else? A river that never 